Dr. Philip Dexter. They uh, are contributors to the documentary Good Morning. And welcome to you, gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Just in the clips there, we saw the power of song and dance, the power of cultural commodities in the liberation of South Africa. I'm going to ask, I don't know where to begin, but let's, let's begin to my left first. I'm going to ask what your thoughts were about the actual events, and then we'll also speak about the documentary that captures them. So let's talk about back in the day, those two concerts. What, what emotions do they evoke in you? First of all, it was very important to realize uh, the power of negotiation itself. There were cross-cutting negotiations to find a way to arrive at this moment of creating these bounds of possibilities for peace, because that's how I look at one humanity. Uh, besides Madiba himself, and who played a very important role, as people are saying, all of us carry music in our heads. And uh, at, at crucial moments, we resort to it. it. It becomes part and parcel of our consciousness. So we must always remember when we look at this that in our heads, we also carry the key, key message about this thing, which is, what can we do for peace? Especially now in the 21st century, where uh, there's a great uh, threat to peace. There's always uh, war drums uh, being played uh, in the world. We see now what is happening in Russia. What do we do? The, pot the possibilities are here to look at what happened then. How did people negotiate to bring a whole lot of people together? And the film is appropriate when it is called One Humanity. We should strive for this. Because without that, I think that we are, we are actually in peril as, a, as, as people. Mm. There is a lot that can be said through song that you can't say to someone uh, sitting across from uh, the table or even in the streets. And that's what song did for us in the apartheid era. We could sing about things that we couldn't really say out loud. It captured the emotions of the time. The importance of song, not only in South Africa, you know, we sing during funerals, we sing during birthdays, we sing, as I said, during electioneering. We're, we're, we sing. We're a nation that sings. But what's the importance of song, do you think, when it comes to a revolution? As I was saying, uh, all of us, uh, whether we are asleep, whether we are low, awake, or whether we are looking at each other, somewhere in our minds, all these songs which have sung, which have touched us, which have touched the, the, the fiber of our life, sing in our heads. The, the, the challenge now is what is it that we should do so that we get them to become consciousness for ourselves, we remember them as consciousness which brought a whole lot of people together who were able to say this is the direction that we, we, we intend moving. And that direction was against uh, uh, fascism, was against apartheid, was a direction which sought to understand and implement peace in the world. There is a, nothing as exciting as when you see a whole lot of people dancing together. And as it was said in the clip, you know, uh, it's, we must remember, usually people associate music to just be emotional. Music is absolutely intellectual because it leaves with you a certain type of thinking, a certain type of commitment, a certain type of conviction, you know. It's very important, but as also it does that, it touches your emotion and that's where its, all, it's, where its power is. To, and that's why we, it, it, we all, it always sings in our heads. We walk with it, yeah. we sleep with it, we fight with it. We do indeed. I'm, I'm going to ask you, Mr. Dexter, what your contribution to One Humanity was that captured uh, the, the song of the time, that captured and brought people together, those historic concerts. What was your contribution to the actual documentary? Well, I, I played a very small role in trying to assist Tony um, on the South African side. Um, and uh, obviously the person who's made the film is the South African, Mickey Dubé. Um, so, you know, mine's been a very small role. And it came about due to the fact that I was actually at the concert in 1988. And uh, Tony and I had a conversation. And he said, would I like to, to help? Of course, as uh, uh, Wally's been saying, for those of us who are part of the anti-apartheid movement, part of the liberation struggle, mm -hmm. this film speaks to the way in which we were able to mobilize people from all walks of life. 
everybody from politicians through to housewives to play a role and contribute towards ensuring that freedom came to the people in our country. Mm -hmm. And in the course of that, I think the film shows not only the power of song, but also the power of media, mm -hmm. of being able to broadcast to over a billion people the, the idea that Nelson Mandela was a leader who had been unjustly imprisoned, that getting him out of jail would bring peace, would bring freedom to the people of South Africa. And I think it's a very powerful film. And yeah, as I say, my role has been a very small one, but I'm very proud to be involved with it. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but yes, you highlighted something that was so important, the role of media in this, and it was well received by the media. So many things that we could have discussed, also what it was like working with Tony, but unfortunately, we're going to have to call it a day for now. But thank you so much for having joined us. And yes, the icons that are with us this, studio, this day in studio, just to discuss uh, celebrating our 20 years of freedom and what had to be done in order for us to gain that freedom. And of course, those two concerts have also uh, played a pivotal role. Pivotal role. Let's leave